here is celebrities versus real people. There's there's a difference in how it's handled with them versus everybody else, right? Well, celebrities are used to feeling very important and they're used to having a lot of attention. And so they're much more susceptible to an affair or a relationship outside of their primary relationship because of the nature of celebrity itself. Okay. So they're more at risk. It's kind of a setup for them to, to be taken in by an affair much more easily. Right. Doesn't excuse it. And I think we're starting to see that right now that uh, in light of the current situation with David Letterman, mm -hmm. he's not going to get off easy. He's not. And in no. real life, typically you don't get off too easy. There's a lot harsher. It, it is a lot right? harsher. And a lot of, I think a lot of businesses really want to keep the business rolling, keep things moving. I'm sure that that's exactly what the network wants to do. Mm -hmm. They want to keep things going smoothly. But at the same time, they don't want to ignore the situation. Because what they do with David Letterman is going to set the bar. Yeah, exactly. Because he's not the only one. Right. And he won't be the first and or the last. And won't be the last either. No, not the first or the last. <laughs> All right. So there's a lot of negative effects when it comes the relationship that they play out on the screen is very romantic. It's much more romantic than what happens in real life. Yeah. But whether you're playing out the scene or whether you're off the set with the, with the same star mm -hmm. or the same co-star, you really are developing a different kind of relationship. And if your ego isn't really solid, if you're not a really stable person with a stable relationship, it's very easy to get taken in and to get carried away. Yeah. So you are more at risk. Well This is Dr. Nancy with Health Tips for the Mind, Body, and Spirit. Our subject for today is ways to keep your mind active and productive during a long work day. As you all know, when you have a long work session or a long work day, you might find yourself getting fatigued. Just do something completely different. Change your activity to something very different from what you were doing for a few minutes. Spend some time with a colleague and then go back to work. Now, one of the most important ways to reduce fatigue in the workplace is to drink water. Have water on your desk and drink it all day. This is one of the most powerful ways to keep your mind moving. One other technique that is very useful for reducing workplace stress is to place your hand completely over your forehead with the palm of the hand completely covering the forehead and take a few deep breaths. It clears the mind, gets the left and right brain communicating with one another, and allows you to go back to work with a fresh perspective. Notice how good it feels to focus on the breath and calm down. Then try to slow the breath by one count on the inhale and one count on the exhale. Imagining yourself letting go of the stress or the worry each time that you exhale. Breathe the stress out each time that you let the breath out until you feel calm again. Whenever you do this, you're going to be reducing the physical stress symptoms, increasing your own longevity, and just making yourself feel more centered and able to deal with whatever stress occurs in your life. So focus, identify the stressor, slow the breathing, take some deep breaths, and exhale out the stress until you feel calm again. This is Dr. Nancy with health tips for the mind, body, and spirit. You've done Leslie's program in the morning, and it's mid-afternoon now, so you're probably either exhausted or stressed, and it's time to do some things to intervene. Okay. So first of all, I would suggest that you actually have some water to drink, because... Oh. You know who's going to start the applause? Yes. My new makeup woman. She likes water. I'm dry. I'm dry. I'm just, she's saying, could you drink? psychologist and author of spiritual fitness, Dr. Nancy Maramer, suffered from a back injury and knows firsthand the wealth of benefits you can get from dancing. It improves heart health and it lowers cholesterol, which is, of course, another one of the benefits of exercise. And it actually is good for things like osteoporosis because it's weight-bearing and it puts weight on the hips and on the legs. The social contact actually creates a healthy condition in the body that makes people live longer.